Okay, well, my first question, where is your 2005 World Series ring? You know what? I actually have it in home. We just moved into a new place, so everything's kind of like a little tucked away still right now at this moment. What does that mean to you, that World Series ring and, and the role, the important role you played in winning it? Uh, Baseball-wise, it's one of my top accomplishments. Um, it's an opportunity that guys play this game for, um, you know, for the love of the game, but guys go 20-some years without ever even getting a chance to win one, and to be able to claim that in my first year is special in itself, but being able to claim one in general yeah. is even more special. That's amazing. Can you eat, does it feel like another lifetime ago, what you've been through since then? Um, in a way, yeah, but, yeah. you know, it hasn't been that long, but in, in the sense of what has happened and what's transpired in between, sure, it can feel that way, but, you know, I, I'm still pretty young, so it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are pretty young, and, and reading your story in the Players' mm -hmm. Tribune was um, startling to me from start to finish. How do you start your story when somebody says, Hi, how did you get to this moment? Like, how do you how do you start that? Um, you know, it's one of those things. It's like uh, I kind of, you know, just basically started on what the question is because uh, uh, there's many different routes to go down yeah. to get to the same answer. But uh, bottom line is uh, some very unfortunate things happen, and I got the short end of a lot of those uh, scenarios. You tell the story so vividly of not only your addiction but going through that surgery and the pain the pain you were in in 2011 before the surgery what was that like and how scary was the unknown of that uh it was it was very scary in the sense of um not knowing what was wrong yeah. okay so there was a lot a long time period before we can really identify where the problem was because i was having these these pains in other areas that were not my spine um, you know, I was getting a lot of shooting pains underneath my armpits and then wow. wrapping from underneath my left scapula, which, you know, for a long time, kind of, you know, I don't want to say misdiagnosed, but we just couldn't pinpoint the location of all these problems until yeah. um, later on, you know, which was too, long, you know, uh, unfortunately it was too far into the uh, trying to self-prescribe yeah. uh, before we really located the area and, and you know, try to jump on it. Were you trying to pitch through a lot of pain? Uh, yeah, early in the season, yeah. Um, but as, before I got hurt in New York, there wasn't a lot of pain. Okay. Um, there was some discomfort, some, uh, you know, like early morning, like, oh, what's that kind yeah. of. But it wasn't anything particular until that day when, you know, honestly, it was like that pitch. You know, it felt weird in the bullpen because I couldn't get loose and just things weren't right. You know, as, as a pitcher, you know when you've got it days and when you don't have it. And it was one of those days where... It didn't matter what I did, how many pitches I threw in the bullpen, that my body just wasn't allowing me to do work that day. And then the, the pitch happened, and um, that's when the real pain set in. When you say going into the surgery, you were very much at ease. You felt like this is going to be quick, and I'm going to get back on the, on the mound. So there was no indication to you that anything should there should be any alarms in what you were going through. No, I mean, and in general, I mean, we all want that self confidence that you know you put your faith in the doctor that everything's going to be okay um, but it was so reassuring at the time that uh, you know I had the head surgeon of a major hospital you know hands-on taking care of me and uh, those kind of situations where what we found out had this the concurrent surgery and how everything happened it's just you never expect that even if something bad or something goes wrong during a surgery that's something you have to accept going into the surgery. That things, there's, there's human error. Yeah, yeah. That, that's acceptable, that's one of the risks that you take. But in my situation, it wasn't just human error, it was, a, it was full negligence, and, and that's where the problems come in. Wow, and, and you realized that, I mean, it was, it was years later, right? That you realized that it had been that, that yeah. concurrent surgery? Yeah, uh, during the whole process of you know, the discovery in the, in the uh, malpractice suit, um, you know, the, it wasn't until you know a good four or five years after my first surgery that we found out what actually was going on, and that made it even more difficult. Totally, you talk very vividly about your struggles with addiction and coming through that too. But how much, how do you kind of balance the two angles of your journey and getting to this to this moment where you are right now? 
Um, you know, quite honestly, you, I couldn't have had one without the other. Really? Yeah. Uh, and, and for me to tell my story, I, I had to go into places that I was, well, embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, it, it was very difficult uh, to share, you know, just a portion of my addiction, my pains, the things that I've gone through. Uh, in order to tell the bigger story, which is more important, uh, and trying to raise awareness of uh, of other things that could go wrong in your life, and being able to come out the back end of that yeah. um, with a different look and different uh, feel on life, um, that's where I think the the bigger picture should go now. Is going through those difficulties to get out the other side is the message that I want to share the most. In, in getting yourself sober, what did you learn about yourself and, and maybe even some of the yes, mental and emotional pains of losing your career the way that you did? Uh, sure. Uh, early on, uh, I struggled with it big time. Uh, I, I, I dealt with depression probably a good four, you know, maybe started coming out of it into the fifth year after, yeah. after my first surgery. Um, you know, a full clinical depression where it was not only... Um, the addiction but losing my career uh, having to face what I'm going to do now and then mm -hmm. also looking in the mirror of okay what did I what did I just do to myself addiction wise did I hurt my parents mm -hmm. did I hurt my family so there's a lot of self reflecting and um, amends that you try to make but first and foremost none of those matter unless you can help yourself first and unless you take care of yourself mentally and physically um, those other things are just moot how do you feel physically right now? Uh, I'll never be the same, to yeah. be quite honest. Um, I, I can live a normal life. Um, I can do plenty of activities and, you know, I golf, fish, uh, swim, all the fun stuff, hike. Um, there's just, you know, I'm limited now. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I have to deal with. And, you know, I don't know what some of those limitations are until I start trying to do them. Mm -hmm. And then I have to pull back on uh, whether it's certain exercises or lifting or um Whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. How did you, can you walk me through how you discovered that a concurrent surgery was going on? Like, how did you, you realize that? What, what made that even part of the investigation? Was it simply that you had, you had to have more surgeries to correct what went wrong? Like, how did you start looking for that, I guess? Well, after the first surgery, um, you know, none of this was, you know, evident yet. Um, yeah. So I had the second surgery, you know, just a few weeks later in emergency surgery. Mm -hmm. And um, so during that second surgery, it wasn't until later on during um, the, the case uh, with just discovery, finding out what, well, first, what concurrent surgery is yeah. and the difference between concurrent surgery and concurrent uh, surgery, how they like to play on the words, where oh. one concurrent is start at the same time, concurrency okay. overlap in just the opening and closing. So a lot of medical terms I now know, yeah, I, I never mean, thought I would know in my life yeah. um, through this whole process has been interesting as well. But just finding out that my case was, um, regardless of what the hospital or doctors say, whether they were there or not, um, it was still under a concurrent surgery where mm -hmm. your doctor's full attention isn't on you, whether he's in the room or not. And... Uh, that's when more mistakes happen, and uh, a lot of mistakes were made in my in my first surgery. Bobby, that is so frightening. I didn't even know that that could happen. That they mm. they would even allow such a thing to happen. It it's scary. Yes, it is. And you know, a lot of people that I've talked to after, because um, during this whole process, you know, these many years of not being able to say anything because it was a it was an ongoing investigation yeah, in yeah. the case. So I wasn't really able to to speak out and and share anything of the dangers or what's going on or what happened to me you know at the moment I just kind of I just disappeared from the game and no one really knew why and yeah. they all just assumed it was because of um, whatever other off the field issues that you know they might have heard about mm -hmm. and un unfortunately that uh, that wasn't the case what's been the reaction of other <coughs> players former teammates for, of just your your open honesty in the article and and the way you're now on this platform you know, I've gotten a lot of great feedback, um, yeah. and it's all been positive. Um, the, there's a lot of uh, friends that I played with during this time that had no idea. Wow. Um, you know, some teammates didn't even know 
I was taking pills and some teammates who didn't even know about what happened to me after I left uh, Boston. So it was just, it was a mixture of things, but after reading and coming forward with all this information and um, kind of like my journey to get to this moment today, it's, uh, it's been very positive and a lot of uh, uh, great feedback from, from my friends and family. That's a powerful story. What do you, you're starting a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and so tell me a little bit more about that and what your, what your ultimate goals here are in speaking out. <laughs> Um, it was just to help others in my situation. Um, I was very blessed with being able to play baseball and, and to be able to afford attorneys who can be able to fight yeah. and take care of my case. And not just because I needed a win or the money, but because I wanted to take this as far as possible to make as much noise as possible because mm -hmm. the hospitals and the doctors have big insurance companies and these way overpriced, overpaid lawyers who can just bury the case Mm -hmm. where a lot of these people, they can't afford that. They've got to get back to work. They've got to support their families. And then opening up a, some sort of nonprofit and uh, being able to help these families with um, everyday life stuff, whether it's uh, groceries for their kids, mm -hmm. you know, just um, schoolwork, uh, you know, helping with rent or bills or things like that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and also being able to help with attorneys, um, the right kind of counseling uh, that you might not be able to afford otherwise. What would you tell 24-year-old world champion Bobby Jenks today that you didn't know then? What advice would you give <laughs> yourself? You know what? I don't think I would tell myself anything. Really? Yeah, because uh, without that journey, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, I might have given him some uh, advice on, on some girl issues, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely not other than life issues. Yeah. Anything else you want me to make sure that I get out for you? Anything? Because you're, I mean, this is just awesome. Uh, no, I think we, you know, just the importance of uh, if, you're, if you've got a surgery or an upcoming uh, surgery or any type of medical issues, ask questions. Yeah. You can't ask enough questions when you're, you're speaking to the doctor. And whether you think it's a stupid question or embarrassing question, knowledge is, is absolutely key in these things. And the more you know, the, the more informed you are going into it, the better you will coming out of it.